We are now moving from Uttar Kashi to Gupt Kashi. Maya is creating structures of thought forms in everyone. Srishtikram to Sangharkram, concrete to abstract and back in an endless play. The trying of it makes it even more painful. Stronger merus in our brain, entangled in the sweep of Satya, Rajas and Tamas. Knowledge, action, inertia. The mountain doesn't move, but we move constantly into each other and out, weaving in and out. Our shadows mingling, merging. We stop for a while, look around us, pick a stone, a stick. We aimlessly throw this and that and walk and run and sit and walk and run. Freeze for a moment at the breakfast table where there were no puris left for you, where there was no water. Where you argued at the trinket shop, where the last note you gave the horse keeper was just right. Where roads were blocked and cars blocked, where an RTO was trying to do his job out of your sight, where a lorry sped by spitting black fumes into the pristine air, where a cough announced a presence the opening of a handbag we need. Here is where time leaves in a huff and a renewed present arrives to wake us up. A pattern melts and another awaits its place in the sun. Hundreds of weaves woven by Vikram Singh, Sandeep, Sujata, Anuradha, Madhu, Plumpton, Chitra, Uma, Raj, Usha, interlacing, hanging above our heads and we are forced to stop at what's commonly called a roadblock, a protocol block. Some protocols are meant to be kept and some kept to be broken. People coalescing, energies coming together, some transactions getting fulfilled, some decisions taken and some commitments thrown in. Someone peels a banana, someone chews on gum, someone's wearing dark glasses and with hope in our pockets, we continue on our own carved ways. Kasht ke liye khed hai, said a signboard as the road curved. <laughs> Finally, it's up the Kedarnath. Well, what more? My plate is full, I thought. But yes, there's one more thing. Perhaps he can stop calling me auntie. Throughout the treks, the locals called us aunties, mossies and matajis. Aunties on a never-ending journey. Uncles too. Even when the mountain claims you, even when stillness visits, in disbelief, mounted on doubt, you still continue to journey. Movement. <laughs> and again the wind must blow and again the fragrance will have to pour out of you. Perhaps now it's time for him to call me by my name.
We started the climb by noon and this time the mufflers, the thermals, raincoats, the warm woolen gloves, nothing was forgotten because it's going to be freezing cold as we reach the top. All safe in the backpack on the horses. We trekked up with Bharat leading the way. I would normally drift away here and there into my own world unknowingly, alone. But this climb I had decided I would be in the group. We followed Ravi's chant of Om Namah Shivai. I could just breathe and walk, hardly sing. The other Yatris watched us in amusement. City bumpkins dressed to the hilt, chanting. They didn't seem to be so bothered about the jackets and shoes. Just a mountain, just a river, just a color, just a sound. No worries, no nothing. In and out the sparkling bluebells. In and out the sparkling bluebells. I am the leader, sang the voice within. Two children holding hands above their heads like an entranceway, a doorway. And through this doorway, the rest of the children happily pranced in and out in a line again and again. That was a game I played as a child. And now, 40 years hence, Auntie still plays the same game. And then a large tea stall. The sun was just setting and the breeze had begun to chill your bones. Hot parathas and tea. Ooh! That was lovely. As I ate my paratha, the thought crossed my mind. Has Bharat had some parathas to eat? I took the plate and wondered where he would be. Three men sat on the way on an old tattered rug, emaciated and in ragged clothes. Aapko chahiye? I asked. They didn't seem keen on parathas. Chai pilado Benji, one said. After all that, I heard a voice, loud, loud. Anu, did you have parathas? I clung to the walking stick, which was lent to me when I needed it. 2,700 meters above sea level, our steps were slowing down. About 16 kilometers uphill is our destination. Slow steps and steps, slow and steady, you will reach. But it was really, really cold. Bharat? Just a windsheeter, cotton kurta, and no muffler. Most of us, too, were in the same place. Someone wrapped him in a woolen blanket and supported him from either side as he took small steps and continued. 
our thoughts must be weighing him down, his feet down, our desires, our journey, I thought. I couldn't think of any other reason why his legs were dragging and dragging. He walked, dragging his feet up, the chains heavy. And the last few kilometers were nothing but heart wrenching, never ending. We did light an impromptu fire in between and fed it with a lot of emotional baggage that we carried. The thorny shrubs had shimmered like stars in the icy cold night, spreading joy, hope, and warmth in our hearts. That was just a brief interval. It was past two at night when we finally reached the abode of Lord Shiva, Kedarnath. We slept under piles of quilts still wearing our jackets and mufflers. In the morning, as usual, the Babas were up early and we sat around the haven and chanted the Mrityunjay Mantra. That's about all you can do there. After a 14-hour trek, you can't think straight. You're just yourself, being, soaking in the sun. This Baba was so beautiful he talked to us for a long time. With his childlike nature, he walked around, sang some old Hindi songs. He carried a log on his shoulders and jumped like children do, carefree, from one step to the other. These sadhus, they were all so simple and full of love. <laughs> ठीक है यहाँ सारे लोग हैं यहाँ ब्रह्मा है यहाँ विष्णु है यहाँ वहाँ देव बाबा है यहाँ नारायण सब है यहाँ ऐसा थोड़ी है यहाँ देवी सती अंशुया है सत्य ही सती है Take care of your body, he said. Do some exercises. Work hard. If he gives you good clothes to wear, wear them. If not, don't wear. He summed up. I felt overjoyed looking at him, listening to him, and I felt an urge to give him something. I put my thin scarf, but beautiful with Radha and Krishna images, in blue-green, around his neck. He tied it into his turban and knotted locks of hair. I saw it as he sat at the haven and chanted and felt quite blessed. They joked and laughed and prayed and did their jobs. Sun or snow or wind, it didn't seem to touch their bodies. I just blow and sleep.